What's up, everybody? My name is Ryan Turford, and welcome back to the final installment of Mega Wednesday. We are playing Mega Man 6 right here on YouTube.com slash Ryan Turford. Um, now, Mega Man 6 is an interesting case. A lot of people didn't really play it when it came out, uh, mainly because it's a very, very, very late NES game, for one. Um, it came out when the Super Nintendo was out here in North America, so it actually came out... This game came out in 1993 which is the same year in North America that we got Mega Man X, which is pretty crazy. Um, the reason for that was it came out the prior year in Japan, and Capcom didn't want to release it here in North America because they thought it would get drowned in sales because it is a late NES game, and there were all, people sort of moved on to the Super Nintendo by that time here in North America. Um, so that being said, it's the only game in the Mega Man series that Nintendo actually published because they were the ones who actually published it here in North America. Of course, in Japan, um, it's still published by Capcom, so if you have the Famicom cartridge, it still very much has no mention of Nintendo on the packaging. It does. It is a very much a Capcom game. Um, so we're going to jump in, and I'm going to show you around Mega Man 6. So we can start with Flame Man, Blizzard Man, Plant Man, Night Man, Tomahawk Man, if we wanted to. Uh, but we're going to start with Flame Man. Uh, the main reason to start our run with him is because... Um, We'll earn all the power-ups we sort of need to get Unlock Beat, um, which might come in handy in Wily, in Wily Oryx's castle. Um, although we don't really use Beat too often. Um, not in this game, not like Mega Man 5, where they were really pushing us to use Beat. So. Um, I love the, the stage design in this level. Um, I think it's actually really cool. Um, you can definitely tell that this is a late uh, NES game because of the visual fidelity and, of course, the, the musical fidelity of this game. Um, it's a miracle that this game even runs on, on the NES, um, because, for the most part, it's so far advanced of any of the Mega Man games uh, that we had prior to this. Uh, one of the cool things about actually doing these Let's Plays is I've sort of gotten, and playing the Legacy Collection in general, is sort of getting to track sort of how the series has really evolved over the course of the six games. Because um, everyone always says, oh, well, Mega Man games look exactly the same, so they must be the same thing. But they're actually very, very different from each other. I mean, you put this game next to Mega Man 1, and there's a huge difference between those two games. Not just in the way that they look, but also in the way that they play, that they sound, the way the enemies are sort of designed, and the levels are designed. It, it's kind of crazy how, how different this game is. Even though they're both really using the same engine. Although, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they scrapped the engine... Uh, going into Mega Man 2, but it, it's really been the same one since then. Um, these little enemies, there's always a weakness for them, and we'll actually get it at the end of this level, uh, but, which is one of the other reasons we actually start here, because they can be kind of annoying in the later levels if you don't have the Rush Power Adapter, which is what we're going to need to stop them. Now, those flames down there are actually not for show. Um, basically, when a flame hits the oil there, um, it lights up the the oil and basically is the equivalent of spikes. So you don't want to hit them unless for some reason you have to. In which case you're just dead. So there's no real <laughs> there's no real justification for that. So there's our first E tank now. Uh, one thing you'll you'll actually notice about me in this playthrough with Mega Man 6 actually is uh, my E tank usage will actually go up from previous Let's Plays and then playthroughs, mainly because the E-Tanks are very, very, very plentiful in this game. You actually get a ton of E-Tanks, so it's sort of meant for you to use them throughout the levels. Like, for example, here with uh, Flame Man, if I was having trouble with him, I would actually probably not hesitate to use an E-Tank just to make sure we get through him okay. Speaking of Flame Man, he's here. He's our first enemy. Uh, now, out of all the people to start with, he's actually probably um, one of the more difficult uh, starting enemies, but as I mentioned, um, the reason we start with him is to sort of set up the path where we earn uh, the different types of rush before we go to the levels to unlock beat. Which I'll talk more about once we get to uh, Yamato Man, is the first one that really qualifies under that category. And he only really has the, the two attacks, and then he sort of jumps at you. Pretty predict predictable pattern, although the flames themselves are not super predictable. Um, they sort of just come out out of nowhere. They have a little bit of a set distance, but that distance sort of increases with each flame that appears. So they're a little bit hard to track and predict. So there we go. So Flame Man has been defeated. And now we're going to move on to Blizzard Man. 
probably the most Canadian robot master ever. And when I say that, he's a skier with a toque on, and he's a robot that lives in the, in the Rocky Mountains. Like, come on, man. It doesn't get any better than that. So we get Flame Blast and Rush Power Adapter. Um, the one that one cool thing about Mega Man 6 that is unique to this game only is the way that Rush handles. Very different from all the other games. Um, Rush basically, there's no Rush Coil anymore. Uh, you either have Rush Jet or uh, Rush Power Adapter, and I'll show you both um, later on. Rush Power Adapter we're actually going to use a little bit in this level, so. Now that extra life down there um, is totally attainable, but is a big pain in the ass, and if we don't have Rush Jet, you will probably actually die trying to get it, so no real reason to go for it. There's a life in there, but as I mentioned before, we, we don't really need it. This game is also very generous on lives as well as E-Tanks, so for the most part, we'll probably have all the ones we need. Um, there are a couple really tough sections that are more based on randomness as to whether or not we're going to die as opposed to difficulty. So for the most part, if we die at all, it'll be because of that. So, Or if I like find we're, we're low on health and we suicide against the boss or something. So I'm going to show you the Rush Power Adapter for the first time. Now this cinematic comes up for both this and Rush Jet. Um, I'm only going to show you this once. Uh, bit, a, bit of a pain in the ass. Unfortunately, there's no way of turning that off since this is an NES game. Boom. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that, because it's an NES game, obviously you can't shut off cutscenes or anything like that. Um, so you just sort of have to deal with it every time. You can skip through it by pressing A, but it'll always at least prompt you and it does slow you down a little bit. Alright, so here we're on this boat now. You see it going up and down. It actually, we can use, it, use that to our advantage because it'll allow us to sort of angle our shots up and down um, if an enemy is below us or above us, for example. But that sort of, you, you see sort of how it changes. Of course, there's also spikes up there above and below, so uh, we just sort of have to watch out for that when we're doing stuff, not to jump too high. You know, we can sort of, sort of pick this guy off. Alright, so here we're going to switch to the power adapter. Um, we're actually going to want to go in this area. Um, since it contains some useful items. You just want to sort of wait for this to reset first and then run down there. If I haven't taught you patience yet when it comes to Mega Man, it's what this game's all about. It's being patient. Of course, you may see me uh, accidentally jump when I mean to slide or vice versa. I've mentioned this a while, a bunch of times before. Uh, as much as I love the Legacy Collection, the D-pad on the Xbox One controller, which is what the console I'm playing it on, sucks. So uh, you might see me accidentally slide or accidentally jump when I meant to do the opposite. Come on, there we go. Again, we're not super low on health. We'll actually be fine when we go to Blizzard Man. So here we're just going to sort of use these uh, time mines to sort of time our way across these jumps. If you rush into that, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. So we're going to switch to the Flame Blast. And as you can tell, we already have three E-Tanks. So as I mentioned, this game is very generous on E-Tanks. So I will be more liberal about that than I usually would. Since when it comes to Mega Man games, Mega Man 6 is actually a game I'm very confident in. Um, I mean, I, I probably couldn't beat it without dying because of the how random some of the sections could be. But for the most part, it's a pretty easy game. Uh, of course, I meant to jump there, not slide, but it made me slide instead. And boom, there we go. So Blizzard Man down. I love the design of Blizzard Man. He just looks so cool. So uh, now we've unlocked the Blizzard attack. And now we're going to go fight Plant Man. So the, for the most part in this game, a lot of the weaknesses, uh, the blast weaknesses don't really make a lot of sense. For example, how is a Yamato gonna beat a knight, or why does a knight beat a centaur for some reason? Um, but the blizzard attack and the the, the uh, flame attack both make a lot of sense, because um, what kills plants? The cold. So we're gonna actually use the plants here. But come on, like, is it? how does a tomahawk get beaten by a plant? 
Like, come on, man. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, Plantman's level, while he himself is very, very goofy, I love the, the way his level is designed. It looks really, really cool. And again, another great looking level, really taking advantage of the fact that it is a late NES game. Um, for the most part, it, it is it looks night and day different over the other games. Mega Man 5 sort of got close to this, but Mega Man 6 is sort of in a league of its own as to um, its look and, and how good the music is in this game. Which is another reason why, I actually, um, if you get Ma give Mega Man, a Mega Man 6 a chance, I actually think that it is one of the better games. Um, even really better than, say, 4 or 5, maybe. Here's our boy, Eddie, from Mega Man 4. Thanks for, thanks for nothing, Eddie. Um, gives us a random item. Usually items that we don't need, sometimes items that we do need, or that are useful. Um, he has a very low drop rate of dropping, say, an E-Tank, um, or extra life. Um, but for the most part, he usually just gives health or weapon energy. And if you know my policy on using weapon energy, I am usually a bit sparse with it throughout the, the course of levels. Um, I don't really use a ton of weapon energy to, to make our runs a little bit easier. Unless, like, there's... It's like Mega Man 2 and you're using the Metal Blade or something. Like, it just makes too much sense not to use it. So here, you gotta be very careful on these springs. If you jump, uh, they're very similar to the musical notes from Mario Brothers. I mean, they're very much inspired by that. Um, so you'll actually jump into the spikes, which is bad. You don't want to jump into spikes. They usually hurt. Um, now the the springs actually, the next section we're gonna go to um, has the, the springs in it as well. And if I'm gonna die anywhere in this Let's Play, this is actually where it's gonna be because um, they're very random as far as whether or not it'll actually count your jump as a jump. Um, so you just sort of have to watch out when when you're uh, timing your jumps here. Um, especially with these fish that come out, you, you sort of have to time your jumps around both the fish that are meant to trap you and whether or not the spring will actually work. Um, again, it, for the most part, with speedrunners too, I think this is probably one of the areas where it really knocks them out the most. Um, so you just really have to be careful here. Like that. That that was almost really, really, really bad. Alright. Alright, so there's still way more to go. Uh, we haven't even gotten pa past the really tough part yet. Um, the real question is, how the fuck did they get the turrets onto the springs? That's what I want to know. Like, do they, like, remote them in from helicopter or something? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. So, we got another fish here. Again, we're gonna sort of want to time our jump around the, whether or not the fish are gonna spawn. And boom! There we go! So, we are at Plant Man, finally. Um, again, when I did my extra life stream, uh, I died, like, eight times there. Because, again, the RNG is really, really bad on the springs. So... Plantman himself is a bit of a pushover. Um, he, I probably will actually take a bunch of damage from him, so if I do use an E-Tank, don't be too surprised. Um, but for the most part, you can sort of trap him in this cycle, um, where he'll basically just always not run into you. Um, he does a lot of damage if, you, if he runs into you, so you gotta be careful. The plant barrier itself doesn't actually do a ton of damage. Of course, he continues the proud tradition of Mega Man robot masters that use barrier weapons. Very similarly to Wood Man or Skull Man, except the Plant Barrier is actually useful against Tomahawk Man, and we're actually going to use it against him. So, there we go, so Plant Man down. Uh, I, I, am, I am so happy I made, that th made it through there unscathed. So our reward for making it through Plant Man's stage so early is the Plant Barrier and Rush Jet, which is going to come in handy with the later levels. So. As I sort of alluded to before, um, these bottom four enemies will give us the parts we need for beat. Um, basically, they have alternate paths in the level, and if you go down the alternate path, you'll unlock a different set of parts for beat. So once you collect all four, it just unlocks beat in your menu. So we're going to start with Tomahawk Man. Tomahawk Man himself, pretty easy, although you sort of have to watch your use of the, the barrier with him, and you'll see that more when we fight him. Uh, I really like the design of his level. It's one of my favorite levels in this game. Um, Despite the fact that it is kind of weird, it is an Old West feel, but it just looks really, really cool. The music I'm not a huge fan of, I like, but it's not as good as something like Flame Man, or even 
Nightman when we get to his level. Also, this is perfectly set up to make you think there's something over there. There's there's not anything over there. The only thing that's over there is spikes. And you don't want to hit spikes. Like, I love these guys with the six shooters. They're really cool. So here we're going to fight uh, an enemy that that I also really like the design of. It's a met vending machine. Um, it's just really, 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 really cool design. Very complex. Again, not something you typically would see in an NES game. Um, but it is a, a, a later game, so. so. Here with these drills, we just sort of want to just kill them as fast, quickly as we can. Because they actually do a massive amount of damage if they hit you. It's not insta-kill, but it hurts. And once again, our boy Eddie. Let's see what he's got this time. Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Alright, so here's where uh, we've got our first split now. This one, you actually don't need to take the top path, but it has useful items, so that's why we're going to go down it. Plus, I can show you guys Rush Jet. So Rush Jet works very di differently than in other Mega Man games. You don't ride him. It's basically a jetpack you use. Um, and you only have a finite amount of energy that only refills once you touch the ground. So you sort of have to time your jumps with Rush Jet to sort of reflect that. Um, that said, it gives us a little more control in later levels um, when we're sort of facing obstacles that don't necessarily need the extra jump height, but uh, could use the extra control to avoid hazards. Of course, we don't really need this anymore. I still have it equipped, though. All right, so once again, we got the Met vending machine. What we're going to do is we're going to run all the way to this side, because um, we're actually at a bit of an advantage when we're uh, on the little platform here. All right, so here is the split path. Um, to get to Tomahawk Man. So what we're going to want to do is wait for this guy to pass. And then we're going to fly under here with Rush Jet. Um, and basically this will take us to the real Tomahawk Man. Which will actually drop the beats par beat parts that we need. So again, there's, there's the, the other path in case you don't have uh, the parts. So there we go. So... To get out of here, what you do is you activate Rush Jet, then you fly out. If you try and fly and then use Rush Jet, you'll go right into the spikes. So, so Tom Tomahawk Man, as I mentioned, not too difficult. He does a lot of damage, um, but the plant barrier is pretty good at taking him out. Now, it doesn't give you enough to spam it, so what you need to do, basically, is he'll have invincibility up. Um, you want to sort of watch your shots. Of course, I was not very smart about that, so we'll actually have to use uh, the Mega Buster on him a little bit. Like that. Uh, but not to worry, because as I mentioned, Tomahawk Man is actually a good starting point as well if you're not concerned about getting beat. Um, he's actually pretty easy to beat. Because all of his attacks you can actually avoid by sliding. You don't actually have to jump or do anything complicated, you just slide under everything, and he's, he's pretty easy to take out. So there we go. So Tomahawk Man is down. And we're actually going to get now probably the item you'll actually see me use the most, which is the Silver Tomahawk. Also the parts for Beat. Uh, the to Silver Tomahawk is really good in the castles. Um, it's a very unique weapon. It, as you sort of see, it sort of fires on an angle like this. Um, yeah, still pretty cool. So now you see that we've got the B parts, since there's a B there. Now we're going to Yamato Man, and literally it's just going to be straight across. I can't believe they planned it like this. So... It just makes you feel like it's just too easy, you know? So, we've got Yamato Man, Master of the Spear. Um, I like the, the, the design of it. It's like, well, look how cool that is. It looks like just sort of a, a futuristic version of Japan. Specifically outside of Tokyo, where Mount Fuji is. So here we could break this open. Um, we don't really need the stuff that's in here, but we may as well go in here. Anyways, I believe there's an E-Tank in here. Or there's the alternate path that leads us to an E-Tank. Again, we can just start to take this guy out with the, the power adapter. Because it can also be used as a weapon as well against the enemies. Again, don't need that health. Gonna save it just in case we need to come back, for whatever reason. So here we got this guy. He, he's riding a frog. I just love the, the, the look of this guy. Uh, there's just so much detail on him, and I love Inafune's uh, artistic style and, and the way that these enemies are designed anyways. Like, I know he doesn't draw all the characters, but like the overall 
feeling and aesthetic of all the Mega Man enemies. They're really cool. So again, we're going to switch to the power adapter. Now we've got five E-Tanks, which sounds totally absurd at this point. So this is sort of the, the top area up there is where I would have come down if I went down the normal path in this level. So again, here's our branching path to get to the real version of Tomahawk Man, because the way that this game sort of explains it, and by Tomahawk Man I mean Yamato Man, is uh, basically you fight the real versions of them by going down um, the the, the uh, alternate paths. There's a fake version of each robot that's down the alternate, the regular path. So, okay. so we're going to use Rush Jet to get across here. You could actually just make that jump without Rush Jet, but it makes it so much easier. It, it makes it more idiot-proof. And in rush jet mode and power in uh, rush jet mode, sorry, you can't actually charge your shots. So that's the whole reason why you're not seeing the charge. Okay, once again, we can just use rush jet to make this area a little bit easier on us. We don't really need to use it, but just gives us that extra bit of control to help us really control the battlefield. So now we are at Yamato Man. Um, Yamato Man is a really cool, des coolly designed robot. His ability is very unique because he'll throw his spear at us and he'll have to run and get it every time. Um, he'll also use a barrage of spears as well uh, after, like, or like that. Usually he starts off by throwing the spear at us first, but... The, the to Silver Tomahawk just does so much damage to him though that... that he's really just not too difficult. There we go, so Yamato Man is down. We've got three more enemies left. So there we go, so we got the Yamato Spear and the E parts for B. Because it goes across and spells B on the screen. So you know you got B. Yamato Spear is very similar to the Needle Cannon from Mega Man 3. You can pretty much spam it on a lot of enemies. And we're not really going to use it too much except for a couple bosses in the castle. And of course against Nightman. So first of all, Nightman's level really, really awesome. My favorite level design and music, and probably my favorite even boss design from this game. This level is very reminiscent of uh, Kingman stage in Shovel Knight. Or I should say that that, night, that stage is really just inspired based off this one. With the, the color scheme and everything, it's very, very, very similar. Uh, the music in this stage is one of my favorite songs from uh, Mega Man in general, which is kind of crazy, um, considering how many good tunes you have in both Mega Man 2 and 3. So. Uh, this section, you just sort of have to time your jumps. And by time them, I don't mean just barely just try and jump over that spike pit. Oh man, that was really dumb. All right, so let's let's do this again. Sorry about that. That was that was. Whew. Yeah. I mean, if you jump too much in that area, what ends up happening is you jump right into the spikes. So you may have to you have to be very careful. Just not that careful. So one other cool tidbit about Nightman as well is uh, basically in the. I've mentioned this before in previous Let's Plays. Um, basically, the way the Robot Masters were designed after Mega Man 1, um, they were all products of uh, contest winners in Japan. Um, but this Mega Man 6 was the first time that the robot design contest was held uh, outside of Japan. So actually, Nightman was actually designed by a Canadian. So he's actually a Canadian Robot Master, which is awesome. Um, and then uh, Windman was actually designed by an American. It's actually really, really, really cool. It's the only Mega Man game where they did that with, because even uh, Mega Man 9 and 10, when those came back, uh, they had similar design contests, but they were only open to Japan as well. Which is why, of course, we got Sheep Man, for God's sake. And we have Russia here, not because we really need it, but it really sort of helps uh, us control the, the, the flow of this a little bit better, a little bit easier. I, you know, you'll see it, the levels more designed around this mechanic once we get to uh, X's castle, so. so. There, we got that little bit of extra health. Thanks, Eddie. 
but I just love it now that it's it's night. Um, the, these enemies with the glasses um, die in two hits. They get really, really mad at you and, and will jump right on top of you if you uh, knock off their glasses. So you have to sort of make quick work of them. So again, we got another E-Tank. We are now up to six. Jesus Christ. And of course, these are some mines. We saw these in Mega Man 5 as well. Just gotta reuse some of the enemies. Now, the main reason I have Rush Jet still equipped is because this section can get a little bit hairy. But what makes it easier, actually, is if you have Rush Jet. Because as I mentioned, it gives us a little bit extra control when navigating that area. Otherwise, it can be a bit of a pain, so. Once again, we're not gonna go, wanna go in the, the top area there. We're gonna wanna go down here. And we just use the power adapter to take all this junk out. We'll make that little jump there. And there we go, we are at Nightman. And of course, he's weak to the Yamato Spear. Once again, showing that he is weak to Japanese spears. I guess. I don't know, man. Um, so, Nightman is, has a really cool design. He's got a shield in front of him. If you fight him with just the Mega Buster, uh, your attacks can't breach the shield. And in fact, no attacks can. Unless, of course, you're using the Yamato Spear. He's basically a Sniper Joe where the, the shield doesn't work if you have a certain weapon. So there we go. So Nightman is down. Two enemies left. We're going to go on to Centaur Man next. Centaur Man, like Plant Man, sort of continues a, another ability from previous Robot Master. Um, he's the ability, he uses the ability to stop time, very similarly to Flash Man or Bright Man. Um, his weapon itself is just as useful as Gravity Man's, um, so we'll only really use it when we fight Wind Man and not many other times. So. Of course, we will get the we'll unlock beat as soon as we beat him as well. Did, did you see what I did there when we beat him? Yeah, I'll shut up now. <laughs> um, Centaur Man stage is pretty cool too. It's uh, very reminiscent of Bubble Man stage from Mega Man 2. Um, we're gonna get a lot of watery parts and then um, parts like this, which are above water. Of course, Pelicans very very uh, reminiscent of the Pelicans from the Flintstones. Yeah, I just said that. It made no sense, but that's okay. Of course, if we want to take this guy out, what we can do is just use the blizzard attack. Otherwise, we're guaranteed to get hit by him. So this part can be a bit tricky, um, because... And you might see me die maybe once in here, um, mainly because the jump sensitivity on the Xbox controller, while less finicky than, say, the D-pad, can be a bit finicky at times with Mega Man, so... Um, brace yourselves, kids. Just sort of gonna concentrate just a bit on this. That's probably the hardest jump right there. And there we go. We passed all the spikes. All right. So now this is actually kind of a cool area, because and boggles the mind as to how the fuck this even works. Because the water is basically flowing upwards and as opposed to downwards. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, we can actually definitely make this jump without the rush jet, but it just makes our lives so much easier. Um, there's no real reason trying to, to try and show off, uh, especially because it could cost us a life there. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take out these guys here. We're going to want that health since we lost some, and we might lose some here with these guys. There we go. All right, once again, our boy Eddie. Let's see what he's got. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. Man, he's just not being any help today. Again, really, really weird and unique enemies. Um, basically here, you just want to keep moving in this area. Um, again, I will, as a precaution, always uh, equip Rush Jet here. Just to make sure we get over and just to make our lives just that much easier. Um, so here, we keep Rush Jet equipped for a similar reason. We want to bait these enemies out. Um, they don't respawn, so they only really drop once. So they're not too much of a hassle, but they can be. Alright, so here, 
If we went down, we'd go to the fake version of Centaur Man, but let's not do that. Let's go to the real version and unlock ourselves a beat. So, right, so here we can use the Knight Circle. Or Knight Chain. That's probably more likely what it is <laughs> rather than Knight Circle. Um, so basically, he has a couple abilities. He's going to teleport and reappear where we are, basically. And then he'll freeze us in time ever so often. Boom. Easy as can pie. He's, he's actually pretty easy. In fact, um, he is pretty beatable if you have the uh, Mega Buster. You'd play the, the fight a little bit differently. You'd sort of keep your distance and sort of jump over his attacks, but he's not too difficult if you have the Mega Buster, so... So we unlocked the Centaur Flash and the T parts for Beat. So now we have unlocked Beat, and now we only have one stage left. It's Wind Man time. Whew, I'm almost sneezing, guys, in case you're wondering what the fuck I'm doing over here. I don't, I don't want to sneeze and have you guys here. Come on now. All right, so we've got Wind Man. He's Master of Wind. This is actually the American design robot. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Wind Man. He's very, very, very similar to Air Man, although he's a little bit different, I guess. Uh, he's got a pretty cool stage as well. Very reminiscent of Air Man's stage as well. Um, but I mean, that's sort of to be expected, given how similar he is. Uh, we'll use the power. Or oh, maybe the Google. No, we don't need to. So here we've got these fans to contend with. Uh, the fans give us super, super extra buoyancy, as you might imagine. Um, the, this level will be easier since we have Rush yet. So, uh, just as a precaution, we, I usually take these guys out, just to ensure that they don't cause any shen shenanigans later. There we go. Again, just having Russia here is a little bit easier to take these guys out. Um, as I mentioned, it sort of uh, helps us out a little bit on the stage. Um, of course, when you jump into the spikes like that, that does not help you on the stage. In fact, causes you to start from the beginning. So, <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Yeah, the, the, the fans themselves can be kind of annoying like that. And of course, we were like, the, the, the frame, like the the page away from the, the, the friggin' checkpoint. Wow, you know, you know, wait for me to jump, huh? All right then. There we go. So it's a good thing I saved that. Of course, I don't know why we're using that still. We got more of these guys causing shenanigans as per usual. Oh, motherfucker. Alright, I rushed there. That was a bad idea. So I'm gonna just calm down. We're good on live still, so we should be okay. I apologize, I'm rushing through the stage when I shouldn't be. We should be fine. This is, on a side note, this is really the first time you guys have seen me die, so... Once again, this panda guy is gonna be really annoying. He's just gonna wait till we climb the ladder, then spit at us. Look at that slowdown, Jesus Christ. As I mentioned, it's a miracle that this game even runs on the NES um, because of how much stuff is going on in it. So what we want to do here is actually not jump 
and just let it, the air sort of propel us there. Which is what we should have done the first time, but I was being a dumbass. So here we'll just go up here, slide down, get the E-Tank. We'll be up to seven E-Tanks now. Uh, we might actually hit nine before we get uh, to X's castle, which is kind of scary. And here, no real reason to fuck with any of that stuff. Uh, we can come down here and use the power adapter to kill this guy and just jump through. Again, as I mentioned, this stage gets a lot easier if you have the, the power adapter and rush jet, uh, which is the one of the reasons why we go through the cycle that we go through. Again, you don't need them, but it just makes things e a little bit easier on you. Of course, that guy hits me almost every single time we go through there, so not, not totally uncommon. Yeah, we don't need to kill those guys. God damn, I'm playing with terrible. And we just want to be very careful going through that area, so... Up here, we can just grab these little power-ups again. There's no branching paths on this level because um, you don't need them, because you already have beat right there. So we got, we're going to equip Centaur Flash. Once again, this will be the only time you really see me use it unless we're fighting Wind Man again, which we're gonna, because that's how Mega Man games work. <laughs> Very similarly to when we fought Tomahawk Man, um, you basically have to uh, be wary as to when you use the Centaur Flash, because you only have enough to defeat him, and you have to make sure he's off his invincibility cycle before you use it. And there we go. So... Wind man down. Sorry about that. So now we're gonna move on to Mr. X's castle. It's a very, very fancy castle, I might say. Of course, we equip Windstorm. Windstorm is used a couple times in this uh, castle as well. Um, we'll use it again when we fight Flame Man, so I can show you guys what it does. It's not incredibly useful, though, because you ha it has to be dropped along the ground. Very similarly to uh, Wave Man's ability from Mega Man 5. Of course, Mr. X, not trying to show off or anything like that, just has a giant X on the front of his castle, so you know it's his. Um, first of all, I love... Out of all the sieges, besides Night Man's, this is probably my favorite as far as the way it looks. Just looking at the background is just so cool. It reminds me of a way more complex version of... Uh, Needleman stage from Mega Man 3. So now we're going to see um, sort of the interesting thing about the these two castles is that basically they're designed around the new rush powers. Um, so you're going to use them a lot. So you're going to see that transformation screen when you're in here a lot. Um, the, the, the reason we go up here, even though the, the jump itself can be fraught with peril, is because otherwise we're not going to make that jump because that Cannon's gonna knock us out of midair, so. And again, we for the most part, we could use the Blizzard attack to take this out, good, but it's a lot. Now, the reason why we don't go over there is because look at how annoyingly difficult that is. It's, there isn't a huge payoff for going that way, so we generally don't try and go that way if we don't have to. There we go. I'm gonna take out this guy just to be sure. Boom. And again, we can be pretty liberal about our health. Even if we get to this boss with no health, or I should say enough to, to get to him without dying, uh, we should be okay. Since we do have the extra E-Tanks. And again, you'll, you'll see me probably use my health pretty liberally here. Because um, I'd rather get to the, the bosses and not die than to do these stages over again. Oh, 
Plus, generally, we actually have enough E-Tanks to match the number of bosses in, Wily's, in uh, Wily and X's castle, so for the most part, we're not going to use too many of those. And yeah, we'll knock this area out because it contains another E-Tank. May as well just grab another one. So we're at eight. We're almost at our maximum. Whew. That was almost a dumb move on my part. Now, basically the, the ladder down there, it just leads to the path we would have used to come in if we went and went down the alternate entrance. So. So here we can just use the, the Mega Buster on these guys. They're not too difficult, they're just more annoying than in, if anything. Um, I believe they're actually weak to the flame attack, um, but don't quote me on that because I usually don't ever use their weakness against them. We have 80 tanks though, so we're going to be fine. So there's the first one, and that's the second one. Easy as can pie. Now the real question I've always wondered is, why is that X out in the middle of space? Or why does this level look like we're in space? Like, we were in a building that was overlooking the city and now somehow we're in space? I, I don't understand. It's weird. So again, we didn't really use any powers. Um, that would have been there if we actually used the, the powers against that enemy, but... Like I said, no real reason to. It's actually almost easier that we're, we were using the Mega Buster. So. That drum's a little bit tricky. Trickier than you would actually think. Here we can actually just run across these. Not a big deal. It's probably the only time we even see them, if I remember correctly. So here the re we're actually going to keep Rush Dead equipped because you see those yellow areas down there, and we can just jump down and just show you this one. Um, you just go through them, and there will be ones over spikes, like this one, so we want to sort of be careful and use Rush Jet to make sure that we get over the platforms. Uh, you can very easily jump over the platforms without it, but since there's no real... Since Rush Jet doesn't use weapon energy, there's no real reason to, to really not use it. Come on! There we go. Gonna just keep high. We can sort of just use Rush Jet for most of this area. Like I said, it basically just gives us the little bit of extra control that makes navigating these jumps way easier. Damn you, Matt! Alright, let's do this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright, let's go and fight this next boss. Which I believe its weakness is the Silver Tomahawk. And it is. Now, let's check our life situation. We got two left. So, I think what we'll do... We'll use an E-Tank here. Just to make sure we actually get this. I could probably actually navigate this with one or two, but I just want to make sure. And like I said, we're not really low on E-Tanks. We're going to still have enough for Wily and everything else, so we should be okay. Again, this, this fight is literally built around Silver Tomahawk, which is kind of crazy. And there we go, so next boss down. Uh, I didn't want to waste any more lives because there is one other RNG section later that we're going to sort of have to deal with. Uh, and I want to sort of conserve our lives for that. Very similarly to the, the spring area in uh, Plantman stage. Just no, no springs this time. It's just randomly dumb for other reasons. 
So here I generally go for this extra life just to make sure because um, this is the level I'm referring to where we're probably actually, if we're going to die anywhere else in this game, this is where we're going to die. We'll go up here because there's the E-Tank that we used. There's a replacement for it, so we may as well get it. Alright, somehow that one got out. Alright, so we're gonna go up here. We got a Windmill Joe. Or a... Ya a uh, yeah. A Yamamoto Joe, I guess. I don't know. We don't have actual Joe enemies in this game, so... So we just sort of let those pass. They are not gonna affect hurt us if we're on the ladder, so... So here we're gonna want Rush Jet. Um, again, this area is can be very tricky. Not at the beginning here, but um, there's a later section can, that can actually be very difficult. So you very you have to use extreme patience and try not to die, essentially. So what you're sort of trying to do is you're trying to get the platforms to line up um, as best as you can, so you can make the jumps. Again, we actually want to get this one to go lower, so then we can do that, as opposed to going up and over. Because if you try and go up and over, you're going to run into problems with those spikes. And we're just going to want to stay back from these guys, if we can. Also, there's not a real reason why you go on the bottom there. You can, you can use the bottom path, but I actually prefer to go this way. It just depends on what type of enemies you want to deal with, I guess. But... Again, there's no like added item or anything else you can, any other drop that really helps you out. So here's, a, here's the part I'm referring to. This part can be very difficult, so you might hear me just go very silent here. It, it's just me concentrating on this area. So again, for the most part, it's still pretty easy at the beginning of it, but. It lures you into that false sense of security. Also, the, the enemy base is almost entirely made up of these flame guys and the um, guys that you flip over. It's kind of dumb. Let's see if we get that to go up here. There we go. Get that extra health. Again, this part is very, very, very tricky. Boom. We can just go right over him. Don't even have to worry about him. So now we're on to the next boss in X's castle. And we got the Met, giant Met machine. <laughs> I think this enemy is actually really hilarious. Um, and we use the blizzard attack against him. Which seems like a weird ability, but... Whatever, I don't I don't make this stuff up. Also, he's really the en only enemy I can think of that's actually weak to the blizzard attack, except, except maybe Plant Man, so we probably won't use it again until we fight Plant Man. Sorry again for that. And now we're moving on to Mr. X himself. The real question is though, is this the end or is it not the end? We'll just have to find out. We'll use the, get the silver tomahawk here since it's really the uh, power we're gonna use next before the blizzard attack. Since I can't think of another situation where we'll really use it for a while. Of course, that was just me being dumb. You're allowed to say it, it's fine. Just what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're like, man, more spikes? And you're like, yep, he, this guy just has a fascination with spikes. He just loves spikes in his, his crazy-looking castle. 
It makes me wonder how the fuck he even gets around in here. Also, that's a huge Mr. Opportunity, but that's okay. We're okay for power, item power. And anyway, we may as well get that E-Tank. Why not? We don't really need it at this point. And again, Silver Tomahawk, we're going to use more than uh, Blizzard for a while anyway, so we don't really need it. So here is kind of an annoying area. Basically, what you sort of want to have to do is crack these eggs before uh, they hatch, because you basically have these bird enemies to deal with. And they can be kind of annoying because they will chase you down uh, if you let them. And again, we just use Rush Hit here, not because we really need it, or that the area is really high, but it just gives us that extra movement. And no reason not to go for these these uh, health points here. Again, we could save them if we were worried about dying, but I'm not too worried. God, that little shield there has, doesn't have much of an area to patrol. Uh, we'll use the alternate path. Um, again, both ways are okay to use, I guess. This is the way I know. And we, we're just sort of... In this area, we're sort of more worried about mines. Mines are annoying. But luckily with Rush Jet, for the most part, we have pretty good control. Unless, of course, you do something like that, which is really dumb, and walk into them. Yeah, no real reason to worry about him. He can't even jump out. All he can do is explode. Because he's like, why won't you play with me? And that's, of course, where we would come out if we went the other way. There's an E-Tank down there. Um, honestly, we are totally fine for E-Tanks, so I am not even going to bother going for that one. It is, again, it is very attainable, just like the, um, the life in... Um, Blizzard Man stage, but for the most part, it's not really worth going for it since we have so many of them. If it was an extra life, I might actually consider it, but um, E-Tank, not at this point. Alright, so now we are at Mr. X, um, and we will use the Flame Blast in order to defeat him. Why? Because it's really easy to defeat him with it. So of course, he's in a giant wrecking ball. Don't know why, he just is. That Wrecking Ball does not look happy. And we'll just use the E-Tank, because again, we got seven more. And we'll actually get more in Wily's Castle. Because yes, spoiler alert, we're going to Wily's Castle in just a second. Alright, so that's Mr. X, he's down. Of course, his scheme for world domination has failed, but he still has enough power to destroy us, Mega Man. <gasps> Shocking, it's Dr. Wily, because he looks fucking the same. How Mega Man did not put the two and two together and figure out it was him is just dumb. Let the final battle begin! So, of course, now we're going to the pseudo version of Wily's castle. I liked it, really liked the design of one, this one more than the others. It is more menacing than the castles in the, the last few games. As I mentioned, they look kind of dumb for the most part. At least from the outside, anyways. I guess I kind of wish they would bring back that that awesome music from X's Castle, but instead we got th this music, which is good, but not as good as I think the, the music in Mr. X's Castle. Um, this is also probably the uh, most annoying level in Wily's Castle. Um, basically, you're going to get a really, really a lot of really dumb jumps that utilize the awesome fans that we were a fan of back in Windman stage, and it can make for a tough time. We're gonna want to, what we're gonna want to do is not do that because we actually went to the right too early. So we're gonna we're gonna do that again. But basically, there's a, a secret path that will get us by all the really tougher ones um, that we're gonna try and go down. Um, but I, I went one screen too early, unfortunately. Again, those spikes were, are very much meant to to trip up people who have never played this game before.
And they can actually be, even if you know where the spikes are, they can actually still be a bit of a pain to, to navigate. Especially because if you're sort of relying on, on Rush Jet to help you, um, it's not going to happen. Alright, so we missed the jump, but that's okay. We actually should still be able to navigate this anyways. Um, again, I'm just using, playing a dangerous game there. Uh, you don't want to play that if you are not, are new to Mega Man. So that's one of the really tough... This is probably the toughest jump you'll actually make in Mega Man. Again, you... For the most part, you don't understand how quickly... How long it takes for, for Rush Jet to activate. So we're going to want to do that. And whew, it looks a lot, lot easier than it actually is, trust me. Alright, so what do we want? We want Blizzard Attack, so at least we have some of it. Um, we're not going to fight um, Plant Man for a while, but it's... We may as well stock up since we have the opportunity to do so. Of course, I'm playing really dumb, <laughs> really dumb here. All right, uh, what do we want? Blizzard attack. There, we can just get behind him and just mash on him. Alright, so here we are. We are at the first enemy in Wily's castle. And it's a big dinosaur. Big dinosaur is weak to the Yamato Spear. So we will use the Yamato Spear to quickly take him out. Again, we'll just use an E-Tank. Again, for the most part, on almost all the bosses going forward, you'll probably see me use at least one E-Tank, just because. Um, just to make this run go a little bit smoother. And because I know we're really not going to need to conserve them at all. Especially because I'm playing really dumb here. Now... I don't know how practical the, this design is for this robot. I don't know what Dr. Wily was thinking, why he shoots out platforms for Mega Man to use to murder him, but whatever, man. It's his robot. Alright, so we're on the stage two. Two more to go. And it literally is two more to go. There, are, there isn't a secret area or anything. Um, this area itself is all icy, very similar to Blizzard Man's stage. So you're going to slip and slide everywhere. Um, but it's not too difficult to navigate. It's actually a little bit easier to navigate than Blizzard Man's stage to begin with. So. We just slip slide around all these guys. Of course, I just love the fact that there's a, uh, a curling rock. It's just so cool. Uh, this puzzle, we the block puzzle, really the only block puzzle we're going to run into in this game, I don't want to have to deal with. So we're going to do this, and this, and that. So we'll just use the secret path to get through it. You can, you can sort of fuck around with the block puzzles all you want, but they're kind of annoying. That's really the only one we're going to see all game, too, so. Uh, they sort of learned by this point in the series that the thing that attracts people to Mega Man is not the block puzzles. I mean, we just really go we can just brute force our way through those guys. Oh! <laughs> it didn't even give me a chance to jump there. So again, with those guys, very, very simple. You would just want to just kill them as quickly as possible. Yamato Spear, we're definitely going to need a lot more of, so no reason not to go for it. However, that health, as much as we would probably want health at this point, no real reason to fuck around with that, because we're going to die if we go for it. And there we go, we're already at boss number two. 
really our last boss before we actually fight the Robot Masters again. Alright, so it's this tank, and what we need to do is use the, I believe, Windstorm on him. It's kind of funny that the, the bubbles totally just take the wind away. It's kind of weird. But it, he's just so easy to beat with the Windstorm. And that's the first time you've really seen me use it, so <laughs> at least it gave us an opportunity to finally use that weapon. You'll also see me use it against Flame Man now that we're going to go fight the Robot Masters again. Ba -da -da. I mean, this level, I, I like it. It, um, it is kind of annoying with these fans. Um, they're going to be kind of problematic for us. But. Again, you get a lot of... If you're going to die at all here, it's going to be a cheap death. Something that you're not really expecting to happen. Like, say, that just killed off-screen by a fucking fan. <laughs> How, we got, How are we doing for lives? We've got three left. All right. We got four left. <laughs> of course, if you try and avoid the, the fans, uh, they just end up um, turning around and then facing you the other direction, so. Again, very similarly to before, just want to make sure to have that extra control. Okay. So we want... Flame Blast, and then we can sort of put all of our focus on to the uh, Blizzard attack when we need more, when we get more energy. And there we go, we can just fly right over those guys. Uh, now the other reason why there's a, a big level before you fight the Robot Masters again is very sim simply to uh, make sure that you have an opportunity to, to gas up your powers. Uh, if you need to, so you're not totally screwed. That way we can farm a bit if we need to. Alright, so who are we going to start with? Alright, so Yamato Man it is. We're going to equip the Silver Tomahawk and take him out. Again, we've got eight E-Tanks, and I believe it gives us another one in the next level, if I'm not mistaken, so you might see me use one or two of these if the situation feels right to do so. Alright, next up. Plant Man. We're going to use the Blizzard Attack. Um, again, we're not going to have enough to totally take him out. Um, so if you're going to see me actually use a uh, E-Tank anywhere, it'll be here. So now we'll switch to the Mega Buster, and he shouldn't be too difficult to take out. We just sort of, uh, the strategy doesn't really change. We just wait for him to use the barrier, charge up while he's doing that, and then just pop him. Like so. Alright, who's next? Alright, so we got Nightman now. We're gonna use the Yamato Spear. Again, Nightman himself, um... He's got a really easy pattern to figure out if you use just the Mega Buster, um, but we don't really need the Yanmato Spear again, so no real reason to, to conserve it. Alright, so now we're all moving on to Centaur Man. Uh, we will use the Night Chain. Again, we're sort of want to be going to want to be conservative with this power in particular, since it is one of the three abilities that's useful against Wily. Uh, we don't really need a ton of it, but it's always good not to have to refill it if we don't have to. And there we go. So Senpar, Centaur Man down, Sempar Man, so to speak. All right, so Wind Man. 
Speaking of Centaur Man, we're gonna use the Centaur Flash on him. Again, this will be the only other time you ever see me use this ability. It doesn't even really freeze him, it like freezes him for a split second, but it doesn't even interrupt him or anything. It's not, and it's not like the ludicrousy when you fight Feral Man using the, uh, the, uh, Bright Man's ability, where he just can't move. Alright, so Tomahawk Man, uh, we will use the Plant Barrier, um, but honestly we could wish probably pretty, beat him pretty easily with the Mega Buster. Alright, Tomahawk Man down. Now, who's next? I believe it's Flame Man, and then Blizzard Man should be our last one. So again, you'll actually see me use the uh, Windstorm here, since again, we're not really going to use it again. Easy. <laughs> see how much easier Flame Man is with that ability? Alright, so we may as well equip Flame Blast since we know who's last. We got Blizzard Man, my boy. He's he's so cool. I just love the look of Blizzard Man. He's just so ridiculous. He's like Frosty the Snowman became a uh, a robot master. There we go, so all the robot masters are down, and now we're gonna move on to Wily. Who's in the next stage? The final stage of Mega Wednesday. Oh man, the, these Let's Plays have been a ton of fun. Um, I've had a lot, of, a lot of fun doing them, uh, especially being like the, my very first Let's Play long, long series like this. Um, I mean, I love Mega Man, I'm a huge Mega Man fan, so I'm, I'm so happy I've been able to do these. And I want to say thanks again for uh, sticking with it with me uh, on these and, and for watching all these. I really appreciate uh, you guys taking a look at these, um, being uh, the, the type of Mega Man fan that I am. Of course, I was gloating and was not actually paying attention there, so that's okay. We should have enough power to get us through here. Um, this enemy is really actually put in basically to farm in case we needed more powers. Um, although the drop rate off these Mets is not very good. So for the most part, we're not going to really use this. Unless for some god awful reason we die. So here's Eddie. Uh, we will equip the Silver Tomahawk since we'll need it more. What do you got for us? <laughs> Thanks for nothing, Eddie. Alright, so the first power we'll use against him is the Night Chain. Um, Dr. Wily has three stages. Um, his first two stages are vulnerable to uh, the Night Chain, and all three uh, stages are vulnerable to um, the the Silver Tomahawk. So that's why we sort of use it in that order, especially if we don't have full Silver Tomahawk. If we did, we wouldn't even need to use anything else. But... Now we've got 8D tanks, so I'm just going to use one here to be safe. All right, so we got two more night chains that we can use against him. All right, so now we'll just use Silver Tomahawk all the way. That was really dumb of me. All right, so that's stage two. Here's stage three. And we'll just use another one for good measure. And there we go! Dr. Wily's down! And now we have fully completed Mega Man 6. So that wraps up Mega Wednesday right here on YouTube.com slash Ryan Turford. So I'm going to give you the rigmarole roll and then we're going to watch the ending together. So of course you can find me on Twitter at any time at Ryan Turford. That's T-U-R-F-O-R-D. 
Um, you also find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Ryan Turford. I also co-host a gaming podcast with Drew McMillan called the Game Mood Pod- Moose Podcast. Look at all for the the uh, the t- details in the comments below for that. As well, in the comments below, I'm going to be holding a little bit of a poll both on here and on my Facebook and my Twitter. And I'm going to be combining all the votes to find out which long series I do next. Um, so please for, make sure to let me know uh, what series you'd like to see me tackle next after Mega Man. So until Friday with our very special review, I mean, video on Friday, I'm Ryan Turford. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Thank you.